All right, what's up, Blue Devil Nation, and welcome back to another edition of the LTU Sports Report Football Coaches Show. My name is Lauren Plant, of course, joined as always by the head coach, Scott Merchant. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, good. <laughs> now, uh, we are communicating today following a 34-14 defeat at home versus Siena Heights. Now that you've had a chance to review and reflect on it, what's your biggest takeaway from Saturday's game? I, I think we played hard. Um, you know, I, I don't think we did that the week before for 60 minutes. I think our kids definitely played hard in this game and they played hard till the final whistle. So I want to give them credit where credit's deserved. I just don't think we played particularly well, especially on offense. Right. Um, you know, defensively, um, they, they kind of bullied us with a big back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd, we'd get their five or six yards of carry. The kid carried the ball 47 times, and um, which is unheard of in Un these, in these days. Of. Yeah. Um, and we just had, you know, they were big and physical, and, and we had a hard time stopping them. And that's not usually something that you can fix. If the other team's bigger and stronger, um, yeah. that's usually an off-season issue. So uh, they had the ball, I think, twice as much as us. Mm -hmm. We weren't on the field to put more pressure on your offense to mm -hmm. score every time you had the ball. Um, we left a lot of opportunities on the field. We, we had a lot of wide open receivers that, for whatever reason, we did not see. Right. Um, and we did not get the ball to, I mean, we, we counted like five to six explosive touchdown possibility plays that we missed mm. that were wide open wow and you can't do that um, against a good team so uh, yeah I think the effort was there which if you don't have effort you have no chance um, but again you know like you asked me at halftime seems to be a running theme um, pretty much in every game except the Judson game we have a moment in the game where there's a sequence mm -hmm. and it's not one phase of the team, it's across the board. Mm -hmm. It's offense, defense, and special teams where we just implode. Um, some people would say choke, mm -hmm. I don't like that word, right. but we implode, we let the pressure get to us in that moment, at the, especially at the end of a half for some reason it seems. Right. And now all of a sudden, you know, we go from being up 7-6 to we're down 13-7 to seven and getting out of the half with that or getting points and because of our mistakes and they made a really good play, uh, really good throw and catch. Yeah. Um, you know, we're down 27 when we were just up 7-6 a few minutes ago. And, you know, we, we cut it to 2014, so it's not like the kids didn't fight back. Right. and. We didn't have a chance in the second half because right. defense came right out, got a turnover, um, and then we scored on the second play. Mm -hmm. So now it's 2014. Mm -hmm. But that, that sequence, instead of us maybe being up, you know, we're down two scores. Right. We're fighting from behind. Right. We, we cannot react in those situations like that. Again, I talked about it last week. We need somebody to stop the bleeding when that happens instead of it snowballing. Mm and going through all three phases of our team. And um, we're, just, we're just not there yet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, the great Vince Lombardi once said, football is like life. It requires perseverance, self-denial, hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and respect for authority. And, you know, adversity will not end for these football players once they get off the field, once they graduate. And for the young players who maybe have, haven't experienced a lot of losing before, how do you and the coaching staff continue to make these situations teachable moments? And sure. quite frankly, sometimes those are difficult conversations. It's all about accountability. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to be clear to everyone, um, we don't enjoy losing as coaches. It takes a toll on yeah. us. Um, I always say every time I lose, like a small piece of me dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know how much life I have left. <laughs> but uh, you've got it, lots of life. Yeah, left. we. Lots um, of life. You know, it's a, it's a life lesson. Yep. Things aren't going to go your way all the time. Right. And even if you do things right, you do everything right. 
sometimes the timing's not right or it's just not in the cards for you at that time. Or, you know, the other team is better or the other team performed better. Yeah. And um, so I think it's a life lesson. And right now the biggest thing we're trying to do is, and, and we even, you know, like, at the beginning of the season when we're zero and zero, like we don't talk about winning and losing a whole lot. Right. It's about, okay, these are the things we need to do to be successful. If we do those things, then the result of that most of the time is gonna be a win. Um, but when you start just putting it in absolutes with wins and losses, to me, you're setting yourself up for um, kind of an empty an empty deal where yeah. like if you don't win like right. what are you going to get out of it right. so um it's a good lesson to learn if you came from a program that won all the time or like you know that's what i'm used to right um it builds humility and it makes you appreciate winning that much more mm -hmm. you know one thing i've learned in my career when i was younger you know i kind of took winning for granted mm -hmm just because I was in great programs and I just thought it happened and you know, it's easy. Right. And as I've gotten older, what I've learned to do is like, you have to appreciate, you know, not only the victories, but the small wins too. Mm. So um, us playing with effort was a win. You know, us playing 60 minutes, you know, that was a win. Not giving up, even though the other team was taking it to us. Okay. Um, so, so right now we are looking to build and we are looking to improve fundamentally, mentally, physically across the board as a football team. And that's the next four weeks, that's our goal, is four weeks from now, have we identified the guys we want for next year and where we want them to play and what do we need to go out and get and how much can we improve in these four weeks in the time we have left with these seniors? Yeah. Back on the road this weekend versus Taylor, they are coming off a, actually a 56-7 loss to the number three team in the country, though, Indiana Wesleyan, who's been putting that kind of a beat down on most of its opponents. So yeah. I'm not going to hold them for that. They are 5-2 and two overall, which is uh, a pretty dramatic improvement. LTU beat them last year. Yeah. Uh, in five of their games this season, they have scored 50 points or better. What do you know about them? Uh, I, they have a lot of seniors. Um, they look like they've spent a lot of time in the weight room. <laughs> They're big physical kids. Um, they play really hard. Um, they defensively. They're similar to what we saw from, uh, Siena. Mm. Um, you know, I'll let you know which ones, be which units better after the game, but, yeah. um, their offense is dynamic. They they are the one team in our conference that runs some triple option, mm. but they're not like Army or Navy where they're just running triple Married option. I it, mean, right. like they, they do a lot of stuff. So Coach Nystrom and our defensive staff definitely have their hands full. Um, you know, nobody's really, I mean, Iwu, besides Iwu, has yeah. really held them down. I mean, I got to think they're averaging 40, 40 plus points a game. Yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, the other two were in the 30s. They yeah, scored, we're going to so. have to be fundamentally sound. We're going to be schematically sound. You know, on triple option, everybody has to do their job, whether you're taking the dive or the quarterback or the pitch. And then you can't be flying up from the secondary because then they'll pull it down and they'll throw it over your head. So we're going to have to be really disciplined mm -hmm. defensively. We're going to have to get guys to the football, run to the ball and tackle, um, which was an issue last game our tackling and then offensively like we're, we're going to have to put points on the board mm -hmm. because they're they have a potent attack they're well coached they they do some really really good stuff offensively um so it's it's i mean it's another tough game it's yeah. another big challenge mm -hmm. especially on the road we have not played well on the road right. the two games we've played um it'll be another overnight trip so uh again I want to see progress. That's I right. want to see improvement. Um, I, you know, I want to be better than we were on the road the last two times. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, you know, it's always recruiting season. So lastly, I'm going to hand the floor over to you as you have something you'd like to say. And I want you to look at that camera right okay. there and I want you to say it. All right. Okay. We brought in 40, 43 football players in this recruiting class. 
Eight were transfers, um, 35 were freshmen. Um, 30 of those 35 freshmen received scholarships. All eight of the transfers did. All right, six of our eight transfers are starters um, and have done an, an outstanding job for us. Another one's a backup, and then another one rotates in. So really seven of our eight start, uh, play, and one's a backup QB. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. why he's not getting PT. Mm -hmm. um, we have to get bigger, we have to get stronger, and we have to get better. And uh, we have scholarship money available. We're looking for transfers to come in here, especially on the offensive and defensive lines in, this, uh, in January. And we, we're committed to bringing in 45 guys this year, minimum. Um, whether that's 35 freshmen again and you know, 10, 15 mm -hmm. transfers or 15 transfers and 30 freshmen. But um, we had a really good crop this year. We need to double that next year, um, but, but we have to get bigger and stronger. And our guys that are here have to get bigger and stronger. If anything's become more evident to me after the first six games, the teams we play are bigger and stronger and more physical than we are. And I don't like saying that, um, but um, we, we, we need that size. And then we need guys that are willing to work in the weight room and, and get bigger when they're here. Yeah, well, there you go. How do you want them to reach out to you? Um, you, you can get me on email, smerchant at ltu.edu. I know kids don't really do that. Coach Merch, LTU on uh, X. Any of our staff, all of our information's on the athletic website under the football page. Um, we had 20 recruits and their families here on Saturday. That was awesome to see. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you want to come get a great degree and make a lot of money when you graduate, you want to play for some good coaches, not me, but my assistants. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you want to get a football scholarship plus academic money yeah. and help us right away um, to improve this program, get in touch with us because we're looking for guys and we're looking right now. That's right. We're looking for a few good men. We're looking men. for a lot of good a men. A lot of good men. The more one, than a few. Because uh, there are strength in numbers and in football. That's right. You know, ultimately, we'd like to have 120 guys on our team. That's right. And if it, that would make us healthy, we can overcome injuries and illness and, you know, other issues that happen during the season. And you, you need about 100 guys to practice with. Mm -hmm. So we're at about 100 right now. But when you take out the 20% that are hurt or sick or ineligible or whatever, yeah. now you're down to 80. Right. And um, that's not where we want to be. No, so not at all. If you can help us, get in touch with us. Um, we're looking. That's right. And you know what? Quite frankly, uh, we have a program. We call it Recruit Yourself. Don't let anybody else come looking for you. You go take what you want and you let these coaches know that you want to play college football and you feel that you have what it takes to be a Blue Devil. And uh, I think that uh, um, we would welcome you with open arms if that's the case. And, and we're, we're building something good here and it's going to happen. Uh, why not be a part of it and get a great education to boot? So that's our sales pitch for today. We might do it again next week and every week because, <laughs> you know, it never ends. So it's always recruiting it's season. It's always, always recruiting season. And speaking of one of the bright spots that, uh, from this past weekend and have been, quite frankly, all season, Curtis Maxwell, uh, Detroit Martin Luther King product, uh, who has been here through thick and thin and continues to uh, strive to great lengths here on the football team. I had an opportunity to talk to him just a few minutes ago. So Curtis Maxwell is a 6'5 offensive lineman listed at 332 pounds on the roster. He is a red shirt senior, which means by foregoing your freshman year, you get five years of eligibility. I think that's how it works. Uh, thanks for joining us here on the uh, LTU Sports Report. Thank you, glad to be here. All right, first question I have uh, is, um, do you have your degree yet? No, uh, okay. I don't have my degree. I'm finishing my last few uh, credits to get wow. my degree and I graduate in December. Okay, fantastic. So what are you majoring in? I major in uh, industrial organizational psychology. Now, how did you come across that as your degree program? Okay, so um, originally when I came in here, 
I was a general business major, mm -hmm. and I was doing uh, the business program for a little bit, and it was it was cool and all, but I just realized that um, I think I'm more of a piz uh, people person than like a business person, so I decided to um, to switch over into the psychology program. Um, but I'm I'm still in like the business aspect of psychology. Okay. So um, you know, I'm working like human resource management and stuff, just working more with people. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that sounds good. Have you had an opportunity to do any internships or anything while you've been here? Yeah. So uh, a summer ago, I had an internship. That I was a manager at one of the fulfillment centers at Amazon. And um, oh, okay. I, yeah, I did that over the summer. And I was just uh, working with the workers, uh, seeing how the normal workflow goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a pretty good experience. All right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, you know, the university life experience. Uh, which you know is rapidly coming to a close for you, but you've had a lot of perspective and you've had a lot of experiences uh, since you have been here. And it's really something as a high schooler coming in, you really can never prepare for, right. you know, until you're actually in it. Now, you, I believe, had the COVID, COVID pandemic right after you started <laughs> college. Mm -hmm. So you've been through that experience. Besides that, what's been the biggest challenge, whether personally or athletically, whatever, that you think <coughs> you've had to overcome during your time in college? And you feel that, that you've got a pretty good grip on that now. Um, so one of the biggest challenges I would say is um, trying to establish like your own personal normal norm normalcy. Mm. I say that because um, when you become when you come into freshman, you know you're just uh, getting the hang of things, and you want to get like a natural flow that so, so that you know what's going on. And uh, just my personal experience being here, I've been to through three separate uh, coaching staffs. Right. So um, at, let's say let's say like every other year is the beginning to a new program. Like you're not knowing, not really knowing what's coming towards you. So right. just like knowing. Just understanding like what your usual flow is and what you know what you can do to help you get by. Offensive line is really the one veteran group really of this team that uh, the coaching staff is very reliant on. Um, you are so dependent on each other uh, and I would imagine that at times it probably really feels like a family, probably some ups and some downs. Uh, yeah. um, what has it been like uh, being a part of this group and how close are you to the guys? Um, being a part of O line is pretty much anything I can ask for. Like uh, it's a brotherhood, you know. We uh, we come in, we do our job, we dominate, and we also have fun while we're doing it. You know, um, we all love each other to a T. Um, like you say, there are good ups and downs, but um, just a brotherhood, and we all take pride in what we do. So. I would just say, yeah, it's a good brotherhood. And I would imagine that, uh, and you tell me, uh, are, th are there some of the guys that you think you'll be connected to for the rest of your life? I'm pretty sure like every person in that room I'll be connected <laughs> okay. to for the rest of my life. There you go, there you go. And that's what it's all about, right? It's about developing relationships and, and who knows how those relationships will develop over the years and who knows, you might end up doing things uh, from a business side right. and, uh, and, <laughs> and that's how it works. Um, obviously the team's not where it wants to be mm -hmm. right now, uh, but there's still a lot of the season left and a lot of time for this group to get better if they just put in the work. Right. What do you think? Um, I think a lot of the things that we went through across the season is uh, is all mental. Mm -hmm. A lot of like mental battles we've had to triumph, triumph over. Uh, I would say just if we just like exclude all, all the outside factors and just focus on you know what we can do, what we can control and what mm -hmm. you what you can do to finish out the season as best as possible. I think that'll that'll just, you know, set us on the right direction. I agree. Mm -hmm. So let's go do that. Yeah. All right. So um, you came from one of the most storied programs, high school programs in Michigan high school football history. Mm -hmm. uh, had an opportunity to cover this young man his entire high school career. Uh, Detroit Martin Luther King comes out of the PSL. You were class of 2019, yes. correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I believe that during your time, and correct me if I'm wrong, you would have been a freshman in 2015. So King won the state title in 2015 mm -hmm. and in 2016, lost in the state semifinal by one point to De La Salle, but yep. still another final four for that team. Yep. And then in uh, 2018, another state championship. So that is an incredible amount of success. What do you think those teams teams did that, were, that made them so successful year after year? Um, I think to a T, uh, every person on that team knew how to like fight their personal battles mm. and um, like I say, do what they can to like help the team. Um, our head coach, uh, Coach Spence, he, yeah. he was really big on like, um, you know, every person on the team doing their part 
to help to help the team in whatever they way they can. So I believe it was a uh, a lot of camaraderie, and uh, whether they knew it or not, like every person on that team was had a role or in some way to help us be successful. Yeah, and it must be fun. Every season, it's like. It's state championship or we have failed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of pressure, but not too much. No, but I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Those are what, that's what you want to go in expecting to win. And obviously, you've had so many players you had the opportunity to play with who are now, you know, mm. uh, doing crazy things at crazy levels. Um, what are your plans after this year? Um, <clears throat> after this year, I want to uh, go on to get my master's in psychology. After I get my master's, I want to uh, look into being a therapist. Okay. Uh, along that route, I do want to look into doing a little bit of sports psychology. Okay. Yeah, because I've been an athlete my whole life, so yeah. I feel like it'll be a fitting job for yeah. me to um, yeah. work with other athletes. On their yeah, mental. the offensive linemen, they're always the cerebral guy. They're, <laughs> they're always the guys who are deep thinkers, <laughs> and, uh, and that's a cool thing, man. And uh, the world needs it. It needs more, more therapists and more people who can be there to uh, uh, help people through through uh, whatever, uh, you know, trouble they're course, dealing with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the team takes on Taylor University this week. Um, you have experience of being on an LTU team that actually has beaten Taylor University in last year, yeah. uh, in fact. Um, but it looks like Taylor ate its Wheaties over the yeah. summer because they are 5-2, and two and uh, they have defeated both Siena Heights and St. Francis, two teams who gave us a hard time. Um, what do you guys need to do to come together and really play uh, to the best of your ability? Uh, Taylor, Taylor is definitely a good team, but uh, once again, I think if um, to a T, like each person on, on, on our team um, looks looks into herself and wins those personal battles, yes. and then have, the, have that translate to the field and winning their one-on-one -on -one battles, because um, they are a good team, but like, you know, we're a better team. Mm -hmm. So I believe yeah. if, if if we go out there and we, you know, do our 111, we would go out and be a successful team. That's it. Um, is it, it seems like now this will be your, I think your third road game, third or fourth. So um, is, it, is it, you know, do you find yourself able to find your focus when you're on the road, even though there's lots of, you know, travel and other things involved? Um, yeah. I, I do I do think uh, traveling games it does allow the time to okay. find find ourselves. Um, I usually end up finding my my stride or my groove like um, the night before and then the uh, right. bus ride on the way to the stadium. Right. That's usually where I find my. That's a special moment. Yeah. It is cool. I'm sure you got your headphones on. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah. what, what do you What do you have on your What's on your playlist right now? What do you? Oh man, I'm listening. Get, what's getting you motivated? I'm listening to any any Detroit artist, any rapper from the city. Okay. They really just <laughs> get me motivated, get me pumped. Just know where I came from and what I came to do. Oh yeah, and they're always rapping about things that you are familiar with, you know, yeah, especially yeah. areas, locales, and things. So that's cool. Well, good luck the rest of the season. Finish strong. I know that uh, I know that you will. I want to thank Curtis Maxwell for being a part of the show. I also want to thank, of course, the head coach, Scott Merchant. You'll be able to watch the game uh, at Taylor. Just go on to the Taylor Athletics YouTube page, and we'll be back with another show next week.